Good morning, how are you? We're gonna take a minute today to talk about something really important, the charging system on your Jeep. It's something that's not very fun or exciting and no one really ever notices it, but when it fails or starts to cause problems, it's a huge problem. If you're like me, a lot of times where we drive our Jeeps is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you're often alone, and around here you don't have cell service. So having a properly sized and maintained charging system can be super important and mean the difference between getting home or not. Just like any other part of your Jeep, it's important that it's maintained properly, you know how to work on it, and it's properly set up for your Jeep. A lot of people think that, oh, my alternator puts out more than 12 volts, I'm good to go. And that's not always the case. You really have to take into consideration things like winches, electric fans, lighting, blower motors, so when you're purchasing an alternator or setting up your Jeep or, or planning a build, you want to add up every electrical component that you plan to run, find out the amperage of that and see what it totals. Things like fuel injection, headlights, stereos, um, fans, all those things have an amperage value and will attribute to your total draw on your system. Once you exceed what your alternator can put out, you'll be running your engine and your accessories solely off the battery, and that'll only work for so long. Things like your winch are a little bit different because uh, my winches both at full pole will take over 300 amps, and there's no alternator uh, setup that I could uh, realistically run that would handle that. So as I'm using my winch, even with the engine running, it's depleting my battery. That's why it's important to stop, let your battery charge up and your winch cool off before you continue. Even though my winch will exceed my output of my alternator, it will determine how fast the battery comes back up when I stop winching. So it's still important to have uh, the highest amperage alternator that you can safely run with your setup. As you increase the amperage of your alternator, you also have to keep in mind uh, the cables that you're running to your accessories and to your battery. Because if you have a super high amperage alternator but little wires, even with all that amperage, um, it's not going to work out well. So you have to plan everything accordingly. This is a really common setup for most Willys F and L heads. This is a 10SI GM one wire alternator conversion. And while that's a great setup, most of them are only rated for 60 to 100 amps. Um, in their stock form, which for most stock Willys Jeeps is totally fine. If your Jeep's unmodified, you don't have a winch, uh, you're basically going to be running your headlights, maybe a heater, a radio, some small things like that. The stock Willys engine is also really simplistic and can run a long time with no alternator should it fail. When you start adding accessories like we were talking about, that puts a strain on your charging system and that's when you're going to run into issues. If you follow me, you know that neither of my Jeeps are stock which is fun, but creates some new challenges. On my TDI swap, I have a 12 SI GM one wire alternator. I think it's rated at 110 amps, which uh, this thing's been on the trail and road for quite some time, and it seems to be pretty adequate. Um, I do have a winch on here, but like I said, you, you just winch in cycles, you know, maybe 30, 40 seconds, let the battery come back up. But other than that, I'm just running the headlights. Um, there is an ECU for the TDI pump, and I am running a little uh, electric lift pump for the fuel system. So um, I'm well under the 110 amps, uh, even when my fan kicks on, uh, but it is something you have to uh, kind of plan for and check all the specs on your electrical equipment. If you have a good battery when your engine's off, your voltage should be just over 12 volts. Once you fire your engine up, if your regulator is good, it should be between 13 and 14 and a half volts. As you start turning things on, your fans kick on, your headlights, whatever else, you'll you should see that stay steady at you know 13 to 14 and a half volts. But then, if you're over capacity of your alternator, you'll notice it'll start dropping down closer to 12. And once your alternator is maxed out, then you're using the battery up. So if you're on the trail and you start noticing your voltage dropping slowly. It means your alternator is probably either not working or simply can't keep up with demands. You can get away with this for a little while, but eventually uh, if your coil stops seeing 12 volts, your engine's going to turn off. So that's why it's important uh, to know what's going on, to make sure your system's properly set up and uh, you'll be good to go. So enough of me yapping. Why are we here today? Why am I making this video? That's well, just to answer a few questions about charging systems, but also for selfish reasons, because I need to work on my Jeep. 
If you're new to the channel, the Jeep we're working on today has a Mazda 13B rotary engine swap, but everything we're gonna talk about would apply to any vehicle with an alternator and a charging system. One of the biggest challenges I found with this build so far is just how many electrical components I've had to add and the strain that that has put on the charging system. The rotary makes a lot of heat and I don't have room for a mechanical fan or a huge radiator, so I'm running fans. So I've got two electric fans on the radiator and two electric fans on the oil cooler. That's really important to keep this thing alive on the trail, especially when we're moving slow. I have converted all the bulbs on this thing to LED, so I am saving some uh, power there. I do have a winch on the front, so that definitely takes a lot of juice. It has a high pressure fuel pump here. It has a low pressure fuel pump between that and the tank. Bunch of relays. If you remember a while ago, I installed the Inferno cab heater, which works great, but definitely takes a lot of juice. So if you add all those things up, my alternator is completely maxed out. And if you turn on the winch, it's maxed out three times over. So that really puts a lot of stress on this old alternator. The stock alternator is rated at 80 amps, which is fine for the original car this engine was in, but definitely not gonna cover all the accessories that I've added. I have added a double belt pulley, which does help uh, from slipping. That's another thing to talk about. If your belt is slipping under load, then it's not charging. Another thing to take into consideration is check the RPM ratings for your alternator. Think about the speeds your engine is normally running and it has to be able to charge efficiently at that speed. So a lot of those one wire alternators don't charge very well at really low RPM. So if you have an L head and you're running slow trails, keep an eye on your voltage. The way I'm gonna deal with all the extra draw I have on my system is with an upgraded alternator. This is a rebuilt and rewound Mitsubishi alternator. So it's the same case and some of the same parts that this Mazda alternator would have had from the factory, but it's been rewound and now puts out 160 amps. I went through all the specs of the items that I'm running on here and it comes out to about 90 to 100 amps roughly if I'm running everything at once, not including the winch obviously. So that's just over uh, what the stock alternator will put out, but the 160 will be more than enough. There's very few instances where I'd be running everything at once because usually if I need the heater on, it's not really hot enough to have the fans all running at once. Those are my biggest draw items. but. There are weird scenarios and you wanna be able to cover all of them no matter what. Plus running your alternator at max output constantly is just going to lead to a failure. Enough yapping, let's change an alternator. Anytime you're working on electrical stuff on your vehicles, disconnect the battery because you don't want any sparky spark. And I like to push the terminal well out of the way and kind of stuff a rag around it so that even if it jumps back, it's not gonna to touch anything. On most of these old Jeeps, changing the alternator is a really simple procedure. Even on my swap Jeeps, it's not much harder than working on an F head or an L head. Once we know power is disconnected, it's safe to work on, and we're just gonna take off the wires. Your setup's gonna be different than this. I don't think there's a whole lot of other uh, Mazda rotary swapped willies but the concept's the same. Unhook your wires, loosen up your belts, take the alternator out. Here you can see the alternator side by side, old, new. Cases are the same. The only difference being now is that I have a double pulley on this one and a single pulley on this one. So just have to swap them over. Thankfully on the Mazda alternator, these are not tapered, so there's you don't need a puller or anything. You just pop the nut off, it slides on and off. So that's it. We're just gonna pop the new one on the new alternator. Now it's just the reverse of disassembly. Put the new alternator in and we'll see if it's charging. Better be. The new alternator is in and it's charging. So right now the only thing running is my oil cooler fan, the fuel pump, and the ECU. 
and you can see it's at 13.6, 13.5, so that's good. So right now I have two little fans that run on the oil cooler all the time. And my high pressure and low pressure fuel pump are running and the ECU for the fuel injection. What I'm going to do now is let the radiator come up to temperature and when my fans kick on then I'll turn on the heater, the headlights, I'm going to turn on everything I have and we'll check the voltage again. And just to confirm it, we'll check here, so 13.5. 13.5 and it's kind of hard to see that's saying close to 14 volts so we'll give it a minute to warm up and then we'll give it a full test we're getting close to the temperature where the fans will kick on and we'll show you how the alternator does at full load okay I'm gonna kick on the heater so the headlights are on heaters on both fuel pumps are running we're still at 13.3 when this gets to 189 I think the fans come on so any second now all right so now I have both radiator fans both oil cooler fans and both fuel pumps the ECU for the EFI is running headlights fan heater everything and it's at 13.2 so really that's showing that having all of that stuff running doesn't affect at all now I'm going to turn off the heater turn off the headlights and the fans have just stopped running they come off at 182 and it's still at 13.3 13.2 so in my mind that's excellent even at 1300 rpm it's putting out plenty of power to run all this stuff. Now I'm going to shut the engine off. So now nothing's running. And we should see the battery slowly drop down back to about 12.6. Hopefully this video answered some of your questions about Jeep charging systems. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'm going to do some long-term testing on this setup. And hopefully it works out well. And... That's it. That's all I got. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.